ever nodded along when someone said transformer without really knowing what's up? The transformer might feel dense, academic, even intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Transformers aren't that complicated. In fact, by the end of this short video, you'll understand exactly how they revolutionized AI. Welcome to AI Club Pro, your go-to channel for making AI concepts clear and accessible to everyone. Today, we are unpacking the landmark 2017 paper, Attention is All You Need, published by Google Brain and Google Research. This is the paper that introduced transformers to the world, a completely new kind of neural network architecture, the one that changed everything for AI language understanding. So let's look at why it was such a big deal by going to the source of the original paper. A link to the paper can be found in the description of the video. This explanation is divided into three parts. First part talks about the core architecture of transformers, its components, and what each of it is responsible for. Second part talks about why transformers were such a game changer, what existed before it, whose limitations transformer addressed. The last part goes into the performance of the model on standard datasets and how it beat up the competition at the time of its release. Here is the famous architecture diagram that was published in this paper. Transformers have two main parts, an encoder and a decoder. Encoder processes the input sequence and decoder creates the output sequence. You might wonder why there is an inward arrow if the decoder is supposed to produce the output. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Both the encoder and the decoder are made of stacks of identical layers. The end that you see here is about how many times each of the stack is repeated. And in this paper, for the base model, this n's value is 6, which means there are 6 stacks of the encoder and the decoder. So we understand that this architecture was primarily for language translation. So it has been adapted for many, many things like summarization, question and answering, chat assistance, etc. Let's stick to language translation for the purpose of understanding this architecture. The transformer works by using two vocabularies, one for input language and one for the output language. Let's take English and Spanish as examples. Typically, the English vocabulary has about 30,000 to 50,000 tokens and Spanish has a similar range of about, again, 30,000 to 50,000 tokens. These tokens aren't always whole words. They're often smaller units known as subwords. Each token gets converted into a numerical vector, which is a list of numbers, um, which happens to be 512. So there are 512 numbers that represent numerically every token. The transformers then add a small trick called positional encoding. This means the same word placed in different positions in the sentence will have a different list of numbers representing it. This allows the model to clearly understand the context as well as the sequence. Encoder block consists of two main parts or sublayers. First one is the multi head self attention, and the second one is a position wise, fully connected feed forward neural network. That's a mouthful. Multi head self attention is responsible for the attention mechanism. Which is, which is what the title is based on. Before going into multi-head attention, let's talk about what is attention here. Attention means figuring out which words matter the most to each other. So how is this accomplished mathematically? How can we understand this kind of a relationship? This is accomplished by using three different matrices, K, Q, and V. 
which essentially contain the parameters of the model. If you're not sure what parameters of a model mean, please watch our video on what is an AI model. Multi-head here means doing this process of attention from multiple perspectives at once, like asking different experts to analyze the same problem based on their expertise. The idea behind this is that this helps the model to jointly attend to information from different perspectives or different representations of spaces at the same time. Like one head will focus on syntax, another on semantics, or different types of relationships between words, etc. A single attention mechanism might get dominated by one aspect, but different heads can capture a richer mix of information. A detailed discussion of what these K, Q, and V matrices are and how they come together to create the multi-head attention mechanism can be found in our upcoming video called Attention is All You Need, What Happens Inside Multi-Head Attention. Let's now talk about position-wise fully connected feed-forward neural network. Position-wise here means that it processes each word's representation independently after the attention mechanism has already figured out the relationship between different words. So this feedforward network does some additional computation after this to process each word again independently, refining the meaning a bit further. There are these additional loops that you see within the sublayers over here. These are called residual connections. They use something called residual connections to prevent learning problems that happen when the networks get too deep. Think of it as adding shortcuts so that the learning stays effective even with many layers. There is a layer normalization going on after these loops called add and norm. So the input of a sublayer gets added to the output of the sublayer followed by a layer normalization. The encoder is designed such that the input and the output of each sublayer, as well as the output of the initial embedding layers, all have the same dimension. This specific dimension is called D model in the paper, which is equal to 512 in the base model. Because each layer takes a D model dimensional input and produces a D model dimensional output via the sublayers and residual connections, the knee model dimension is maintained as the representations pass up through the entire stack. The decoder structure is similar to the encoder structure, but it has one key addition called encoder-decoder attention. This special attention allows the decoder to directly reference the input sentence from the encoder when generating words. It's like glancing back at the original question before giving your answer. Another unique aspect of the decoder is the masked self-attention. So the masking here ensures that the decoder can only use words that it has already generated in the past, so no peeking ahead. Think of writing a sentence. You can't use future words that you haven't written yet to write that sentence, right? So it's something similar. So this is why the input to the decoder is shifted one step to the right. It always relies on previously generated words when generating a new word. So when generating the third word, it will only look at the first two words and the original input to the context. So this should kind of answer the question of why there is an input arrow at the decoder. This arrow essentially shows us that the output that is generated by the decoder is fed back to it with a lag. So it has an autoregressive nature to it. So why was Transformer a game changer? Transformers didn't just appear. They replaced models with serious limitations. So let's see what changed. Before Transformers showed up, the main players for things like machine translation were algorithms based on recurrent neural networks, RNNs, and convolutional neural networks, CNNs. These were complex neural network structures that were doing okay for that time. 
but they had their limitations. Let's look at RNNs, which are known for, which are designed for sequential information processing, and text is of course sequential. Earlier models called RNNs like LSTMs and GRUs read sentences word by word. That was slow. Each word waited for the previous word, like it was kind of like building a wall brick by brick, even if you have a whole team standing by. Another big issue was handling longer sentences. Traditional models struggled with this when the words are especially like far apart. They lost context very easily. While these earlier models did use attention, it wasn't enough because they still relied on RNNs which had to process, which had to process the word one by one. Think of reading a book where you're not allowed to flip back pages. It's hard to keep track and transformers solved this by making attention the core mechanism directly linking every word to other word instantly. CNNs, on the other hand, did not have the parallelization problem. There were networks like ByteNet or s 2 s which were based on CNN architecture. CNNs could read multiple words at once, but they still struggled with distant words, the words that are far apart, so they couldn't connect those easily. For distant words, the computation would be too complex in case of a CNN. Transformers fixed both these problems. They read entire sentences in parallel, speeding up the processing dramatically, and they easily connected words that were far apart, understanding context better than ever before. But were transformers really that good? Yes, absolutely. On key language translation tests, transformers beat previous champions by a huge margin. But what data did these transformers use to train themselves? It turns out that they used many large big machine translation data sets. The vocabulary was subword units, which resulted in about 30 to 40,000 tokens in the vocabulary, and they trained the model using a machine with eight NVIDIA GPUs, and the base model took about 0.4 seconds for one step, and they trained for about 100,000 steps. So that's roughly 12 hours, which is quite small. The bigger model that they trained took about three to four days, which is still a great improvement over previous methods. The results shown in the paper are stunningly good. Blue measures how machine translations match human translations. A higher blue score means better translation quality. You can see that the big model outperformed the previous reported models, including ensembles, by more than two blue on English to German and performed comparably for English to French. Transformers set new standards for translating languages like English to German. Single models beat entire groups of models. Another big takeaway is that transformers didn't just translate, they also understood grammar and meaning deeply. They outperformed specialized models without extra tuning. This is implicitly shown through its performance on tasks requiring such understanding, such as English constituency parsing. Constituency parsing splits a sentence into its grammatical parts, so it really tests the understanding of the sentence structure. Surprisingly, Transformer does very well on this task, even without any special tuning. This is shown in Table 4 in column WSJ23. This shows that attention alone is enough to capture those core language structures. This paper, Attention is All You Need, wasn't just academic theory. It sparked the era of modern AI. Virtually every big name model today, from GPT to BERT, traces back here. If you want more clear AI explanations, subscribe and check the description for resources. Next up, we'll explore exactly what happens inside multi-head attention. See you there.